That's not a jet engine, it's your car. Does your vehicle sound like this? Well, that noise is coming from the coolant fan, and some people think, I'll just replace the coolant fan and I'm good to go. That's not the case in most situations, so let's check it out. If you need a thermostat, a coolant temp sensor, or a fan, you can get those at 1AAuto.com. Every vehicle is a little bit different. You may have one radiator fan or even two radiator fans. And generally, when you turn the AC on, the fans are going to come on full blast. So you may get some of that noise from just the AC coming on. But under normal driving conditions, when the fan comes on, it's not as aggressive as you hear in this situation. So in the event that your coolant fan is stuck on high, it could have something to do with the engine coolant temp sensor or the thermostat. The reason for this is when one of these parts fails, the computer turns the fan on to protect the engine. It doesn't want the engine to overheat and it doesn't know whether the sensor has failed or there's actually a problem with the engine. In most cases, you're gonna get a check engine light and you can scan it with a little scan tool like this, see what code you have. Now just take the connector underneath your dash, find where it plugs in. Most places is right there to the left side. We're gonna turn the key on and just follow along. Codes found. We want to read the codes. Engine codes. This is the code we're looking at. A P0128, which is a coolant thermostat code. So that's relating to the fans. That's why the fans are coming on. So there's two of those. So this is basically saying that the coolant temperature is not getting up to operating temperature. So like we said, the computer doesn't know whether there's a problem with the temp sensor or if the engine's not working properly or there's a bad thermostat. This little code reader got us in the right direction, but it's not going to give us a lot of information. It just tells us the code and we could clear it if we wanted to, but that's as far as we can go. We're going to have to use a more powerful scan tool to be able to get some information. Engine coolant temp sensor, we want to check on that. And then we want the intake air temp sensor as well. And we want these as close as possible. Because the engine coolant temp is cold and the intake air temp is cold right now. So that's exactly what we're looking for. If you saw that the engine coolant temp sensor was at negative 40 or 419 degrees, then there's something going on with the coolant temp sensor. But because they're very close together, that's a good indication that the coolant temp sensor is probably working properly. You could run the vehicle and watch it increase. If you see any weird spikes, that's an indication that there could be something going on there. But from what I see here, it looks like it's going to be okay. So now we know the coolant temp sensor is working properly. It's doing its job, but the computer sees that there's something wrong. The engine's not heating up to temperature. And that's because that thermostat is sticking open a little bit and causing coolant to flow through the engine and not heat up to full operating temperature. So we're gonna have to replace the thermostat. Now if you didn't have any of the check engine light or any of the codes, there could also be a wiring problem with the fan sticking or a fan relay that's stuck on. That's not as common, but it still does happen. Now we're gonna replace the thermostat. This one comes with a housing. And for this vehicle, it's way down here below the intake. So we're gonna have to take the intake off to do this job. Most vehicles, the thermostat isn't this difficult, but some are buried. We're gonna start with draining the coolant from the coolant system. That way that when you're doing the thermostat, you don't have a big floodgate. Taking off the radiator cap is gonna help that coolant drain a little better. And you wanna take off anything that's in your way. In this case, we have to take the air box off and any covers that are in the way, we'll have to pull those off, the snorkel. Don't forget to disconnect any connectors. You don't want to break any wires. And any hoses that are in the way, you want to pop those out as well. Now, because our thermostat is underneath the intake, we have to pull the intake off. And it slides right out of the way, easy to get to. And we take the thermostat bolts out and then we can access the thermostat housing. 
and it comes right out. Comparing the old thermostat to the new thermostat, you may not visually see anything wrong with it, but there could be something wrong with the spring. Let's talk about this thermostat. So it's a valve that blocks coolant from going through the engine. The hot coolant is on this side and as it heats up, it's gonna expand this spring and that's gonna cause the valve to open, allow coolant to go through the cold coolant. And as that cools down the spring, the spring's gonna close and the thermostat will prevent coolant from going through. Now what we could do just to show you that valve open is boil a cup of water and put it in, but that's gonna take too long. So what we're gonna do is just heat it up with a torch. Just heat up the spring. Ah, oh, and you can see it's moving. And the valve's opening. So you can see that the valve's open. Now the spring being all disformed like that, that could be because we're using a torch instead of hot water. But then again, this thermostat was failing, so there could be something wrong with that spring period. And over time, those springs are gonna break down and they're not gonna work as well. And that could cause the issue with the thermostat. Now we're gonna reinstall the thermostat housing, get it lined up, get the bolts started, and start to tighten those down. You wanna torque those to spec, that's important. And for our vehicle, we have a tube that has to slide into place and we'll tighten down any other fasteners as we go and any type of insulation that needs to be reinstalled, we'll place that back in place, along with any tie downs for the wiring harnesses, the other insulation. That's mostly just a sound barrier. And we're gonna install the intake, tighten those bolts down and torque to spec, install any wiring clips, and wiring harnesses. And because of our vehicle needing to take out the air box, we'll reinstall the air box and the air snorkel. Get that all lined up and tighten those down. Connect the connectors for the mass airflow sensor, lock it down, and add your appropriate coolant. When you topped off all the coolant, you wanna run the engine for about 10 to 15 minutes to let it warm up constantly checking the engine temperature and the coolant level and make sure it does not overheat and then let the vehicle cool down. After it's cooled down, you wanna recheck the level. The new thermostat's in. Now all we have to do is clear the check engine light, run the vehicle for about 10 to 15 minutes and our jet engine noise should be gone from under the hood. Now if you had to replace just the coolant temp sensor, it's gonna be a little easier than a thermostat. You just gotta pull the sensor out real quick and put it back in. You may not even have to drain the coolant down. Right, erase codes. Yes. Erasing done. All right, exit. Disconnect the tool and start it up. Now with the vehicle warmed up, the fan is kicked on, and you can see that it's not that big rush of air going, it's just spinning normal speed, and that's how it's supposed to run when the engine's running normally, not that huge jet engine noise. So there's nothing wrong with the fan when it's running like that, it's another component in the vehicle that's just causing the fan to run with that huge volume of air. You can see the fan is spinning, and that's running normal. So the thermostat fixed our problem and if you need a thermostat or an engine coolant temp sensor make sure you click the link in the description head over to 1aauto.com and if you enjoyed the video and it helped you out make sure you subscribe to our channel ring the bell turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos does your vehicle sound like this well did <laughs> does your vehicle sound like this well <laughs> on one side <clears throat> all right ready and if you need, do it again. All right, the new thermostat's in.